It's time to focus on seniors with Helping Seniors TV. The television show designed to make you aware of senior issues and needs, as well as to acquaint you with the resources available to help you age in place and with dignity. Now, here's your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Joe Steckler, and welcome to Helping Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. Our show is designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our topic today is organized creative designs. And joining me is Carla Peckerel, our consultant and professional organizer for organized creative designs. Welcome, Carla. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine. I'm Good. fine. I'm, I, I, I got off to a rocky start this morning. It seems like the old one. You're a nurse. Yes, so I am. I'll, I'll tell people what your background is before okay. and I'll let you talk about it a little bit. But um, maybe a nurse can recognize that sometimes that when you get older, sometimes these time changes and make it a lot harder to adjust the body. And while, while the mind picks up on things, the body just doesn't do it. I understand that. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I do. So what is your background, Carl? My background is I am a re registered nurse, been a registered nurse for 35 years. Uh, started at the bedside, of course, and then um, delve into uh, discharge planning, which is now called case management right. in the hospital. I've done that for the last 20 years. And as you probably know, case management involves not only dealing with insurance companies, but also with discharge planning. Um, so I would assist the physician and the family along with the patient in deciding on where to go, what to do after the patient's discharge from the hospital. Um, such as home health care or a skilled nursing facility, rehab facility, acute rehab facility, any kind of equipment that they would need at home, um, I would order. And uh, I've done that for a very long time and decided it was time for a change. A question about, you lived in California, you did all that in California. Yes, I did. Did you do any of that here in Florida? No, I haven't. So you haven't. So you don't. Is there anything that would let you compare what you did in California to what is happening in Florida? Well, um, not really. Okay, I, I had a reason for asking it because I sensed that the way you said what you did, that you probably were a good case manager. See, yes, um, I feel I was. <laughs> okay, but there are case managers and there are case managers. Mm -hmm. The good ones know what happens to the patient. They follow up on the patient. So many case managers want to get the person out of the hospital. They just want to get them gone. They don't want to follow up and make sure they know what happens. And since I've been 38 years in the military and then the last 27 years being in, in serving the care business, because my last job I had come out of the Navy's retirement home. Mm -hmm. So I understand a, a lot about case management, hospitals, I ran one. So it's not easy. and. Being involved in the care business here, when you, I heard you talk about uh, assisted living, skilled nursing care, and all that, understanding all these factors is extremely important. And I suspect, is that one of the reasons, did you form this company, organize creative designs yourself, or is that a, is that a charter type thing? No, I just, I, uh, that's, this is my, my own business. There's no chain, there's no, um, well, what gave you the idea to organize it? Well, I've always been extremely organized. I've been extremely task-oriented. And um, throughout the years, my friends told me that I had obsessive-compulsive disorder. So when I decided that I needed a break from nursing and I wanted to delve into something else, I decided to blend my organizational skills with my nursing skills. And I want to emphasize on uh, the senior population. I've always been very, very um, comfortable dealing with that mm -hmm. type of population. I started at 16 um, as a skilled nursing or a, a certified uh, nurse's aide. My okay. dad told me if I wanted to go into nursing, I had to start from the bottom. You had to go be a CNA first. I had to be a CNA first. So I started that and I worked weekends. What did your dad there. do? 
My dad was a chief petty officer in the Navy and served in the Korean War. I ask one more question. What did he, do you know what his rate was? Um, I think he was a third class. No, no, he said it was a payoff, but was he an engineer, radio? Do you know what, what, what area he worked in? Oh, he worked in the Seabees. My dad uh, eventually became a mechanical engineer. Was he ever stationed in um, Fort Wainemi? Yes, he was, actually. How, right how, after him and my mother got married, they were there. About, was he stationed in Mississippi then, in Gulfport? No, actually, he served on the island of Guam. In Guam? I've been there. It's an interesting. Did you, did you live on Guam? No, it was way before I was born. <laughs> way before your time. Okay, but you know, the type of conversation we're having here, viewers like to listen to what people's background experiences are because they they all at the same time wonder why did that person start what they started. So we establish the fact you're an organized person. You like to do that. What exactly is? organized creative designs. What is it? Basically, it's a service that helps um, seniors basically achieve what they can't do themselves, and that is get organized. Um, you know, as we live longer, we accumulate more and more possessions, we accumulate more and more paper, we accumulate more and more treasures, and what do you do with all of that? And what I'm finding in this business is that seniors get very overwhelmed with just the material stuff that they have. Right. And I don't know, I, it's probably generational, but they don't want to throw anything away. Um, I'm so working. what do you do then? Basically, I encourage and I help them decide what to keep what to donate, what to give to family members if family members want anything, like treasures. Um, and I can recycle, donate, and basically I just declutter the house and then implement systems in order to keep that clutter-free environment the same once I leave. Would you, as a matter of doing business, if something, if somebody was old and frailer and they had a lot of stuff on the floor, oriental rugs, things like that, do you recommend that they remove things that are tripping hazards from oh, the nursing Oh, absolutely, husband? absolutely. I also have seven years of home health experience. So I'm used to being in a client's home and identifying the safety hazards that are in a home. Uh, one of the biggest risks that seniors have is the risk of falling. Right. And that's, you know, that's such a significant life change for a person. But how do you convince? I remember the guy that was the head of the Navy nuclear reactor program, Bruce Tamaris, an admiral. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife and I were at a party with uh, Bruce and his wife one time, and uh, she was telling me how they finally downsized. They just bit the bullet and did it, and they mm -hmm. got into an apartment because Bruce was traveling. He was in Washington, D.C., and he had her home in Norfolk, Virginia, and they, they just couldn't maintain that. But she said it was so, they thought it would be so hard to get rid of all this stuff. They found that once they started doing it, and getting rid of the stuff and giving it to the children, it was a lot easier, but it made it a lot easier on the two older people. Oh. And at the time, they weren't old at all. Mm -hmm. But they recognized at a younger age that they needed to do that. Mm -hmm. um, I wish more and more people would do that, to be honest. Uh, I've just found that the older you get, the harder it is to give up that memory or that feeling of that particular possession. Yep. But I think would think that if you do it the right way, you can help people keep the memory but get rid of the possession. Oh, that's true. That's one of the secrets, I would think, that, mm -hmm. that you have to help them keep the memory, have them hold there with their, and that's why some treasures would mean a lot more than others. I think, isn't part of your 
your difficult of your degree of difficulty in your job is helping people decide which of the things mean less to them and which mean more yes definitely definitely it's 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 a it's a long process it can be and what my business philosophy is compassion and caring but also having assertive communication really asking the right questions to that person is this absolutely necessary for you to touch hold um, or can we take a picture of it and put it in a photo album that would generate the same feeling and memory you know can you can you let the physical um, item go or um, can we take a part of that that possession such as a woman's wedding dress is very very emotional and you know <laughs> well you probably don't know but <laughs> anyway you know you take a part of it you take, um, take one of the of it? yeah you take a piece of it you take the uh, one of the appliques you take the tiara that she had with her veil you take her um, part of her bouquet you take maybe the husband's boutonniere I mean, all of this is saved. I know. I've seen it. No, I'm, I'm and, not laughing. I, <laughs> and you, you, you put it in a shadow box, and you put it That's on the exactly wall. That's exactly what I was thinking. I've yeah. seen it done. I've yes. seen it. The reason I, I, I can take because I heard you. I, I was visualizing. I know exactly what you're going to say because I've seen this thing done. Mm -hmm. the but same people thing with, don't think about it. No. To do it. It's like taking a whole military career and condensing it to a shadow mm -hmm. box this big. Mm-hmm. Duty stations, rank, and, uh, and medals, certain badge, medals, and all accommodations. That stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, the biggest thing you have to decide then is which of the children are going to get that stuff. Yeah, that that can be that can pose a problem. That's the problem, isn't it? It can be. It can be a problem. Um, what I suggest is that you ask the children what they want. You'd be surprised. I have had so many seniors say, my kids, my grandkids, they don't want any of this stuff. It's old, you know, and you'd be surprised. They want it. They want it because they remember grandma using exactly it right, or Carla. mama using it. And that's a treasure to them. And every time they bring it out, that loved one that gave it to them is remembered. And that's what counts. You know what's strange about what you're saying is that the grandchildren, if more of you grandparents would be honest about this, and you sit and you ask your grandchildren, they will remember the things that you've had a long time and the things you just recently acquired. Most times, I know our grandchildren have said, they call me Papa Joe. Mm -hmm. I said, well, Papa Joe, we want something that you and Mimi Terry had. We don't want something that somebody gave you. We want something that was yours. I remember I was in my I Love Me room, and mm -hmm. uh, I was sitting there, and one of the granddaughters was there, and I said, Bella, take a look around. Tell mm -hmm. me three things in here you want me to put your name on. And she looked around, and she told me three things she wanted me to put her name on. Mm -hmm. So I do that, and generally I find that uh, none of the grandchildren, very few times is there ever look like it might be a squabble or something. Mm -hmm. And if there is a squabble, what I suggest is the two grandchildren get together, they flip a coin. One's heads, one's tails. My mother, when my father died, mom collected everything, and mm -hmm. she had a codicil put in her will. Mm -hmm. And it was this, if you three boys fight over anything in this house, I want you to take everything in the house, put it on the street and sell it and divide the money up. Mm -hmm. We understood. Exactly. And when, when my mother passed away, our whole family, everybody gathered at the house and my two brothers and I went through and we said, this is what we want. And one would say, I would like this, Joe. Do you want it? I, no. If, if one of my brothers said they wanted it, I wasn't going to say I wanted it. And the same thing with them. If I said I wanted it, they wouldn't say they wanted it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it worked out beautifully. Within three days, our family had cleaned the entire house out 
He was ready to be repainted, and it turned out one of the nieces bought the home. Really? Yes, she bought it and lived in it for 10 years until it built a new house and they sold it. Mm -hmm. But she added on to it a lot. She had a good eye, eye for decorating. She she was a possession collector. She went to all these estate sales? Yes. And you're familiar with estate I sales. Am. What do you think about estate sales? I think they're a necessity. Um, in fact, um, I just recently lost both my parents within a year. Okay. And my sister and I had an estate sale. And it's heartbreaking in a way. But we also helped a lot of people that didn't have the financial resources to purchase new. That's the way I looked at it. The few things that we had, my daughter and my nephew, I could not believe the things that they wanted. When, my, when we were going through and purging my parents' house. My sister and I went through first, and then um, Bridget and Jared went through, and you know, my parents had old, I shouldn't say old, but they had colonial Ethan Allen dark cherry wood furniture in the living room. It was, we were, my sister and I were like, who is going to buy that? It's so outdated. Guess who took it? My they nephew, wanted, my nephew, it, one, he remembered, you know, from little on, seeing it, and two, he felt it was very masculine, so he's going to use it in his first apartment. So it really taught me, don't just automatically think your, your kids and your grandkids don't want things. Ask. But in the customers you deal with, what are some of the frequently asked questions? What do they ask you? Uh, basically, the problems I'm seeing here are they're inundated with paper. It's very strange. I've had two clients that have saved every piece of paper they've had. Holy mackerel. Yes. One, one, um, one client, her husband passed away 21 years ago and he told her don't throw any paper away. I walked in the house, she's got boxes stuffed with paper, old bills, magazines, books. That guy. And when um, she, actually it was a referral from Helping Seniors, uh, when I called her she said, my husband told me to keep this for, never throw it away, I'm over it. I need help. <laughs> so part of it is they're so overwhelmed, they just need somebody to help them start mm -hmm. the process. And I, the first day I worked with her for two hours and she, her anxiety level came down. She was more, more focused. She was relieved that somebody was with her to help her. Um, and she now has an action plan and I'll follow up with her next week on what she's doing this week. So she has homework. Do you do you find that you help people decide what is important to keep in the way of paperwork, what's not important? Yes, my other client that I have, um, she just recently lost her husband and she was his primary caregiver for three years. Total care, 100%. She never filed her taxes for three years. She hasn't filed them. and. I'm, we're in the process of going through this massive pile of mail and papers and you know figuring out what needs to go to the accountant. And we're going but, and that you have to go through every piece of paper to yeah. make sure it's not important. So and she's greatly relieved. She said I have a paper phobia. Every time I even think about it, I, I get a headache and I have to go lay down. Have you ever have you ever thought about contacting the estate people in town, the estate salespeople, and telling them about what you do? Uh, that's on my list to do. I have a list of all of them. Okay. And the reason I say that is because, uh, see, I know several of them very well. And it, it, I've heard you express some things that they've expressed. And some of the families, uh, 
simply don't know what to do. And I'm, I'm sure that there are a lot of things, there are a lot of mistakes made uh, simply because the estate salespeople are so inundated with all this stuff. And once you start unpacking, I, I, I cannot believe, and, and have you encountered if families where the stuff is just put away in barrels and attics and, and, and behind in, in, in rooms, stored, boxes, sealed, been that way for years? Sure. Yeah, and I've seen people put it in their garage and it's there for years and it's not under air or for whatever, it gets water damaged, it gets mildewed and they just, they don't know what to do with it. So you started this thing as business yourself? Yes. Are you have anybody working with you now? Um, I actually um, am mentoring an occupational therapist student. I am. It makes sense. I, I, re yeah. I understand how that could be very important yeah. because uh, you mentioned occupational therapy. Can I tell them for our viewers what an occupational therapist does? Because most of them, they don't think know. it has to do with the workplace. You tell them it's different. No, an occupational therapist deals with the activities of daily living, cooking, bathing, dressing, and they primarily help you in your home. Occupational therapy is very, very big in the home health care arena. Right. So that's why it would be a logical fit for somebody that's in that line of work to be involved in your line of work. Yes, definitely. I can see, and you've been in this for two years. I've been in this for two years, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One of the questions I had for you was mm -hmm. specific services. You do a home assessment. What do you mean by that? If a, if a senior is in the process of downsizing, they have the huge house, they've lived in it for 40 years, and now they want to go into a smaller home or okay. a condominium or even assisted living. Um, I would go in and look at both environments, the large house with all the possessions and the, and the smaller house. I would take um, measurements of the smaller house, each room, and I would go back and ask the client, what furniture do you, what furniture can you not live without? Like your bedroom set, you know, a, a particular hutch, whatever. And basically I would go back and I would do a detailed floor plan. I have a, a computer program and I would, would see if it would fit. Yeah. And then I would help them, de you know, basically downsize their possessions in order for them to move. And I would develop storage solutions that would um, make the environment, their smaller environment safe. When so you many say storage solutions, are you talking about if they want to store it for fam family members? There would be no reason to store stuff if it wasn't going to save it for a family member. Is am I correct or not? That well, what I'm talking about is so many times they want to have their treasures. Think about it. Okay. And so I would develop um, specific storage solutions like the shadow box. Okay. For that, and I would also help decorate, and I would keep in mind the safety of that person. So it, it's kind of hard to explain because each situation no, is not. so it's different. Not. It's not that hard to explain. How do you follow up though? What do you do when you follow up? When I follow see up? If it, see, if it, see if what you said would fit, did fit? Oh, okay. Well, actually, um, I would probably come in after everything was in and do another assessment. And then I would um, offer suggestions on how to keep it neat and clutter free. And then I would probably follow up, you know, every couple of weeks and then slowly taper, taper down. And so that's where the word coaching comes in. Well, coaching you is... You sort of coach them. I would coach them, yes. Um, some seniors, such as um, the lady who, is, who was saving all the paper for, because her husband said, 
she's very, very active. She just needed a place to start. Coaching is more of, I'd go in once a week, see how she's doing. She has homework to do. She knows what she needs to do. I'm gonna call her tomorrow, see how she's doing with the homework. And then I'm gonna go in next week and we're going to um, develop another, what I call action plan. How have your experiences been? Favorable or you find people resent you're telling them what to do? Um, actually, it's been very favorable. And it's all in how you present it. Mm -hmm. you, basically, I would make, I make suggestions. For okay. instance, she wanted to start in the living room. I said, I'm worried about your bedroom. Your bedroom's so cluttered. I'm worried you're gonna fall in the middle of the night if you have to go to the bathroom. So she said, okay, we can start in the bedroom. That makes sense to me. So that's where other degrees of your training come in, I think would probably help in making you decide what to, case management, working with people. It's, uh, I, was, I, would, I would think this business would require a degree of, certain degree of skill in working with people. Definitely. A great deal of skill in working with people. Definitely, definitely. How do people pay for your services? Um, basically, um, it's, ca it's cash, check, credit card. Um, I do work with clients that have um, limited financial resources. I can do a sliding scale. And I would really eventually like to do pro bono work and have a group of volunteers that would go in and really help a senior that didn't have the financial resources to pay. Okay. You stay in touch with Kay then? I am. Stay in touch with her. I am definitely staying in touch with uh, Kay. Kyle, I enjoyed talking to you today. I, I've learned something myself, but I want to thank you and I want to thank you, viewer, for watching today's episode of Helping Seniors. I hope you learned something about downsizing. We need to pay attention. <laughs> I'm Joe Stackler. Thank you for joining our program today. I'd like to remind you that our senior information line is available to you at 321-473-7770. There you can get help and direction that could be helpful for your specific situation or circumstances. The work of helping seniors is very important, but we can't do it alone. That is why our sponsors here in Brevard County are so important. I'd like to thank our many area sponsors, businesses and medical providers who support the mission of helping seniors that help us carry the cost of our media efforts. If you'd like to join us either as a business partner or simply donate as an individual, we would welcome your call at 321-473-7770. You are always welcome to visit our website at www.helpingseniorsofbrevard.org. Thanks so much for your help. It does make a difference.